So I'm sure that all of you guys have seen the default grub screen, which looks a little something like so. Now, obviously, it's entirely functional looking, but it's a little bit boring. And if you're going to have to see it, you know, once a day or multiple times a day, maybe it's going to be a good idea to make it look a little bit prettier. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So Grub actually has quite a bit of visual configuration. You can set things like the background image, the font, or even set an entire theme. So let's actually go see how that works. Okay, so I'm actually going to be working from a VM today just because it's going to make it so much easier to actually record any changes I make to Grub. But everything I'm going to tell you today is going to work regardless of which distro you're on and whether you're on a VM or not. So if you're on Arch Linux on Metal or you're on Ubuntu in a VM, this is going to work as long as you have Grub installed. So the first thing you need to know is how to actually go and update your Grub config. So every single time you actually make a change to your Grub configuration, you're going to want to run this command. So grub mkconfig o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot CFG. So what this is going to do is regenerate your grub.cfg file. This is basically the configuration file that gets read when grub boots. This is a bit different from the configuration file we're going to be editing, but the CFG file basically gets, I guess, generated from the file that we go and edit. So make sure that you remember this command because this is going to be very important for every single change you make to your grub config. So let's just get rid of that for now. And the first thing we're going to do is actually go have a look at the uh, grub configuration itself. So that'll be located in uh, your slash Etsy directory. So slash Etsy slash default slash grub. Now, the files associated with grub besides this one are going to be located in the slash boot slash grub directory. But this one grub configuration file is located in your Etsy directory. So let's just have a look at this. And the contents of this will... I guess be very dependent on which distro you're actually on. On Ubuntu, they look a little something like this. Now I've modified them just a little bit, but it's basically the default Ubuntu configuration. On Arch Linux, it's in a bit of a different order, but all of the variables are gonna be the exact same. You just might not have some of them included by default. So the first thing we're gonna look at is setting your Grub GFX mode. So what this is gonna do is actually let you set a resolution for Grub to be displayed at. So by default in Ubuntu, it tries to set it to 640 by 480. But let's say that you have a 1080p monitor. Well, what you can do is say, I want it to be running at 1920 by 1080. And then you can also give the color depth. So we're gonna set it to 32. So when you do this, don't just set one resolution, set multiple and then set the absolute fallback. So let's also set say 1280 by 720. And then let's set the color depth to be the same thing. And then once you've actually set all of the ranges that you want, then the last thing you should have is auto. What auto is going to do is say, okay, well, you couldn't run it at 1920 by 1080. You couldn't run it at 1280 by 720. I'm just going to pick whatever resolution I can actually work with. So always include auto just in case, I don't know, you plug into a monitor that isn't a 1080p monitor and doesn't have a 720p mode you wanna make sure that Grub is still able to display something. So auto is just gonna make sure that it's just gonna pick whatever works. And you're also going to wanna to include grub underscore GFX payload underscore Linux equals keep. This is basically just gonna make sure that the kernel actually acknowledges this setting right here. Now, this is taken directly from the GNU.org website. Depending on your kernel, your distribution, your graphics card and the phase of the moon, Note that using this option may cause GNU slash Linux to suffer from various display problems. So if this breaks anything and Grub isn't displaying things properly, then you're not going to be able to go ahead and actually use these two settings. Now, these two settings are pretty much required for a lot of the graphical stuff we're going to do. If you're going to be setting, say, a wallpaper or you're going to be setting a theme, you pretty much need to have these two settings working. If they don't work, you're not really going to be able to go ahead. But... I haven't run into any problems on anything that I'm running them with. On modern hardware, it should be fine if you're running something a bit older where the drivers are kind of, I guess, flaky at this point. You may have problems, but besides those, you're probably going to be fine. So if you do have any problems, you're going to have to force it into text mode. So the two settings to do that are these right here. So grub underscore terminal underscore output 
equals console. And what this is going to do is basically disable the frame buffer. And the other thing that you can do is with this setting right here, instead of doing keep, set this to text. So what this is going to do is force it into text mode. But as I said, you're probably not going to have to do that. So let's actually go and set it back to what we need it to be set this back to a comment and uncomment this one. So in this state, we should be able to go and work with some of the other graphic settings. Okay, so let's say that you want a custom background. You don't really care about the rest of a theme. You just want your background to be a little bit more interesting. So that can be done by setting the grub underscore background setting. And we can then go and set that to basically anywhere on our file system. So I'm going to set it to slash boot slash grub. And then I've got an image in here called uh, image.jpg. Now, it doesn't have to be located in the boot directory. I would recommend putting it there just so all of your grub files can be in one location, but it can be in your pictures directory, in your home folder, it can be in your videos directory, it doesn't matter where it is, as long as the root user actually has access to it. Okay, so let's go and set a font for grub to use. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that out of the box, all of the fonts, at least yeah, I think it's going to be all of the fonts you have won't actually work in Grub. So if you go run, say, like FC list, you'll see a list of all your fonts. None of these fonts are actually going to work in Grub because what you have to do is actually convert it into a format that Grub can actually read. So let's pick something, I don't know, what's actually installed on Ubuntu by default. I assume the Ubuntu mono fonts are. Yeah, cool. So let's take, say, this font right here and then convert it to a type that grub can actually use. So to do that, what we have to do is go sudo grub-mk font, and then we're going to set the size. I'm gonna set the size to just be 24. And then we can also set what the font is going to be saved to. So the output location is going to be slash boot, slash grub, slash fonts. Let's just call it, I don't know, uh, Ubuntu dot pf2 so pf2 is the type of font that this is going to be and then we can actually pass in the font that we want to use so in this case we're going to be using what was it this one right here so let's just copy that over and paste it in give that a second to run and there we go so if we go over to the slash boot slash grub slash fonts directory, we should see that there is a new font in here. So we have unicode.pf2, that was the default font that was there, and we also have ubuntu.pf2 as well. So what we can do from this point is go back over here, and then basically just go and set the grub font. So grub underscore font equals, and then pass in the path to the font. So in this case, it's going to be slash boot, slash grub, slash fonts, slash ubuntu.pf2. So just go and make sure that you got that correct just so you actually can find the font. So slash boot slash grub slash fonts slash ubuntu.pf2. Yep, that seems to be correct. Cool. So one other thing that we're going to do is set the colors for the actual menu. And there's two settings for this. So we have grub underscore color underscore normal. And we also have grub underscore color underscore highlight. So basically what the normal color is, is just anything just generally sitting in the menu. So if you have the name of your distro there, but you don't have it selected, that would be the normal color. And then what the highlight color is, is basically anything that you have your cursor over. So the way that we go and set this is with two values. We have a foreground color and we have a background color. So if you want to do light colors, it is light dash the color name. So light dash cyan, light dash red, light dash blue, light dash magenta, any of the basic SVG color names. But we don't just have to use those names. We can also use a hex value as well. So we can set something like FFEE33. Or we can also set a shortened down version as well. So F4E or something like that. That will also work as well. Okay, so now what we can do is actually go and save this file. And then what I'm going to do is run this command wherever it is. sudo grub dash make config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. So as I said earlier, this command is very, very important to make sure that your grub dot cfg file will be regenerated. So I'll just run this now and put in my password for this. Give it a second go and regenerate the file. Found the background, awesome. Give it a second to keep going, and there we go, now we're done. So I'm going to go and open up the grub menu, and I'll cut back to when that's actually open.
Okay, so I kind of expected this to happen, but the graphics drivers inside of VirtualBox don't seem to work properly. So even though Grub was able to successfully find the image, inside of VirtualBox is not actually able to show it. But I'll leave a link to it working properly down below on my Arch system. But as you can see, it did manage to successfully change our font, so at least that part is working. Luckily though, the rest of the stuff that I wanted to show you doesn't actually require graphics mode. So I'm just going to clear out all of this stuff now because we don't actually need it. So let's say that you don't like the timeout of the grub menu. So by default, it's usually going to be set to, at least on Arch Linux, it's going to be set to 15 seconds. So that means if you don't do anything for 15 seconds, it's just going to automatically select the first thing that you actually choose. So that would be just setting the grub underscore timeout setting to be equal to 15. Now, if you want it to boot immediately, you can go and set this to zero. So what that means is unless you go and press, I think it's escape, basically Grub is just going to say, okay, you just want to automatically boot into whatever the last setting was. So if it's booting into Arch, it'll boot into Arch. If it's booting into Ubuntu, it's booting into that or Windows, whatever it is, it's just going to automatically select whatever is selected. And if you want it to just wait for user input and just never automatically select anything, just set it to negative one. So I had it on negative one for testing just because that makes it much easier to actually record the screen and make mistakes. So we can also change the way that the timeout is actually handled. So let's just set this to, I don't know, 10 seconds. And then also what we can do is set the grub underscore timeout underscore style variable. And we can set this to either countdown, hidden, or menu. So what countdown is going to do is basically just show you the countdown on the screen. Hidden, what that's going to do is actually hide the grub menu until you go and press a key. So if you want to still have a 10 second countdown, but you just want to see a blank screen, you would go and set this variable in here to be hidden. And you can also set it to menu and menu is the default setting. So countdown only shows the countdown and menu is basically just going to show you the regular menu that you see. So personally, I like this to just be on menu with like a 10 second countdown timer, but you can go and set it to whatever you feel more comfortable with. Okay, so let's say that whatever shows up at the top of your grub menu isn't actually what you want to be the default. So let's say that you have a Windows drive at the top and then Arch Linux, and you want Arch Linux to be the default, but for whatever reason, it's not in the right order. So what you can do is go set the grub underscore default option and then set it to basically whatever number in the list that you want to be using. So if you want to have the first thing, then you'll set it to zero because it's a list indexed from zero. If you want it to be the second thing, you set it to one, so on and so forth. Now you can also make it so it will remember whatever last thing you selected. So if you last booted into your Windows drive and you want to boot into your Windows drive again, basically this is going to make it so that it's going to save that option. So the way that we do that is with two settings. So we need the grub default option again, and we set this to be saved. And we also have to go and set the grub underscore save default option. And we set this to true. So what this is gonna mean is whenever you select an option in your grub menu, basically it's going to save that option. And then the next time you boot into your system, it's going to try and read out that option and reselect it again. There's one last important setting to tell you about, and that is the grub theme. So right now I'm back on my host system, and basically to set a grub theme, what you have to do is set the grub underscore theme variable, and then the path that you have to pass in is the location of a theme file. Now, a grub theme is actually made up of multiple different files. So you have the actual theme file itself, which will set things like, you know, what font you want to be using, where to actually find the images, things like that. And then you have all of the different assets you want to use. So we have this box here, which is used for something. And then we have all of these other boxes. And then we have some icons in here for various distros. And basically all you have to pass in to the actual Grub configuration is this single Grub theme file. You don't pass in anything else. You just pass in the Grub theme. Now I'm not going to be going into how to actually make a Grub theme today because my suggestion, as always, is go find a theme that already exists, try to break it, mess around with stuff, and just work from there. So if you want to go and actually find a Grub theme on Arch, a lot of them are going to be available in the AUR, but if you're on anything else, they're going to be on websites like Gnome Look and Feel, I think it's called. 
Basically, just go look up Grub Theme and you'll find a bunch of different websites that have them. Pretty much what you're going to do is go and download the archive, unarchive it, and then I would recommend putting it in the slash boot slash grub slash themes directory just because that's an easy place to have it and you're always going to know where they are. But as with the background image setting, it doesn't have to be there. It can be literally anywhere else on your file system. So I didn't mention this earlier, but the grub theme is going to be dependent on this value right here. So the grub underscore GFX payload underscore Linux equals keep setting. This is going to make sure that you're actually running in GFX term mode. If this is missing, the theme is probably not going to work. Generally, grub won't default to GFX term. You have to go and actually enable that for yourself. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. There is one other thing I could tell you about, and that is the init tune. I really don't want to tell you about it, though. Basically, you can make it so when you start up Grub, it will make a noise. Now, this is horrendously annoying, so if you want to do this, there'll be a link to it down below. I would say don't do it, but it is an option there if you're, I guess, running a headless system and you don't know when Grub has actually started. For any other reason besides that, don't have an init tune. It's just going to get really, really annoying. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montada, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony, Donald, John, Mikkel, Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go support my work, there'll be some links to my Patreon and subscribe star down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want. And I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, you can go check out my podcast that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library, YouTube for the video version, and also the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, you can go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, BitChute, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. And remember to sub and remember to smash the like button and whatever else I have to say. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.